G'day guys. Yes, I am going again with my coral reef pour. I wasn't that happy with the last one, as you knew. And I think the problem was that I still had too much paint on the surface. So when the cells came up, because there's so much paint it was moving around, they, they keep spreading. So I wasn't that happy with it. So I've cut down on the amount of paint I'm using. This is a 50 centimetre by 100 centimetre canvas, uh, which is a 20 by 40 inch, in case you missed the last video. Uh, the last video had about 1,800 grams of mixed paint. This one I've cut down to uh, about 13, 1,400 grams, something like that. So hopefully uh, that will be better. And also I'm going to do go back to thinner bands of colour. So that's my swipe colour there. Actually, I should put the oil in it now before I forget. I'm only putting the treadmill silicone oil in the swipe colour. You can put a couple of drops in each or you can put it all in the swipe colour. I, I don't think it really makes a difference, but uh, feel free to try it and let me know what you think. I've done it both ways. Um, oh, I might help if I open it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, seven went in. Okay. That's all I'm going to put in there. Give it a good stir. So the, as I said, the amount of paint that you have left on your surface is really important. If you've got too much, then uh, the paint just keeps moving around and the cells will keep growing. So I ended up with um, a lot more cluster looking cells rather than the individual cells. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, go and, have, go and have a look at it and see what you think. All right, so same colours. This is my red oxide. Uh, pouring medium's exactly the same. I've gone 70% uh, glue, 30% water. So nothing's changed there. And I will be able to stretch my paints out a little bit more because I've got less paint here. It's only 400 grams, but, you know, it all, all adds up. If you don't tip most of it off, you can be in a bit of trouble. And there's no point making more, too much more than you need. You're just going to waste it. So, yeah, I've cut down to 1,400. Well, actually, 1,350 to be exact. Um, now, the other problem I had last time was... I was trying to get that kind of a zigzag look, so I might try and put it on now. Except the problem is, when I start tilting, it's all going to tilt out of the way. So I think I'll just leave more of a gap at the top there for now and see how we go. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Just leave more of a gap if I can. I can sort of do this. Kind of make a little thing like that with it. Maybe that way I can get a little bit of my swipe colour to come down just a touch. We'll see what happens. I think it was that big blob of... Well, there was a couple of things that I wasn't happy about. There was the big blob of lime in the middle. Um, and then I had the issues of that big section of the, the dark swap colour, which there was too much of it and there was no cells popping up through there. So that was a bit of an issue as well for me. And then, of course, the... Um, the cells that kept growing. I've cut down on the lime a little bit too. Okay, that's my gold. That's metallic gold, that one. Um, this one here is turquoise. Using all the global paints again today. And then I've got white, I've got lime. Uh, 
Uh, red oxide. I kind of lost the red oxide in the last four. I don't know why. It might have been too thin. It's quite thin out of the tub. I have made it a little bit thicker this time. Maybe that's that'll help a bit. If your paint's too thin, um, or your mix is too thin, it kind of blends too much with the other colours, and you don't really see it. You, you need them to be the good, relative thick consistency. So these, as I said, they've all got um, glue and water, 70% glue, 30% water, and then I've mixed that to most of the colours, one and a half times pouring medium to one part paint. Uh, the white was really thick, so it's got two to one. And my swipe colour, I always make thinner, so that's two to one as well. And let's just do little thin drizzles of the white. Because I don't want big pops of white. I can use the white to fill in my gaps. Mind a little bit of white, but we don't need to go overboard with it. Put it on the corners so it's not wasted. Okay, and the lime. This was the culprit last time. It was a bit, I had that big blob at the top, and when I dragged, I had a big block that way. So I'm going to do just a little drizzle this time. And there isn't as much here either this time around, so hopefully it won't be too, oops, there's a big blob, too dominant. Have a little bit up there like that. So just, I've gone quite thin with the lime, little blobs. I don't mind little pops of it for sure, I just don't want that big band of it that I got last time. So I've cut back. Uh, all the other cups have got, I'll tell you because I wrote, wrote it down, the other cups have all got 120 grams of pouring medium to 80 grams of paint. That's one and a half to one. The lime I did 80, 60. So yeah, cut down on that. Right. Uh, that was the red oxide. I'm going to show you the bottles, should I? Marina was the pale blue aqua one and white. The swipe colour today is deep sea. It's a beautiful dark greeny blue oceany colour and my lime, of course. Right, that is the colours. I've got my little sheets of plastic ready to go. My document holder that I've cut up. That's my swipe tool. It's a nice weight. All right, let's get to tilting. Still don't know how I'm going to do this top section yet. Maybe I should put this on now. Actually, let me, I'll do the sides first. I really don't know. I know what I want to achieve, but I just don't know if I can get it. straight down move this paint move it move it over the edge and back so straight away it's looking better less paint on there it's moving a little bit slower than before which is nice let's come down This edge is already covered, so I'm just moving the weight of the paint down there so I can cover this bottom bit here. Again, I don't want to lose all the paint. You know, I want to keep some of it on here. Just not as much as I had last time. Let's see if I can get more in the way of cells this time rather than just clusters. Clusters are pretty, but I don't want the whole canvas full of them. Now, it's a bit hard just to get to that little area there, so I'm just going to put some paint there. Cover my 
the sides. Okay, that's done. This corner here isn't quite covered yet, so let's pop some paint there. And at this stage, it doesn't matter if you know your paint's a little bit muddy because you're going to be swiping over it, so it doesn't really matter what you put up there just yet. Okay, that's covered. That's covered. So that side's done, the bottom's done. A little bit up there. Okay, that's done. Let me take the weight of the paint back up a little bit. See how it's looking, see how it's moving. Mm. I'll just tip a little bit more off. So it's moving relatively well. Just going to take a little bit more off. We'll see if this makes any difference at all to the size and shape of my cells. Okay, so just moving that back into the centre again. Oh, it looks like there's a lot of red oxide. <laughs> I did make it thicker, so it looks as if it's quite dominant there now. Righto, let's pop this green on. I'm going to put a little bit there, and I'm just going to kind of wriggle it a little bit. I'm going to make sure that I've got enough before I start doing too much wriggling with it. I'm going to actually tilt it. See if I can get it to blend into that a little bit better than what I did last time. So I've kept more gap there this time because I didn't like how the cells were popping up underneath that swipe at the top there. That was something else I didn't like. Picky, aren't I? I've got quite a lot of these big canvases left, so might as well use them up. I made um, a good amount of this swipe colour so that I did have enough to coat, you know, the side of the canvas. Okay, let's leave, just make sure that I've got the corner here covered. Preparation takes the longest time, doesn't it? Should actually make sure. I was say I should leave some in there, but it's too late now. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go up that way, just to move the paint forward. Got a little gap there, and then I'm going to tilt back this way, and just make sure that that's covered on the back there. Almost. Look at you. You're going to be troublesome. You are. Yes, you are. Push you down. That's what gave me grief last time. Push you down. Okay. I think that's it. If you're worried about silicone oil in this section up here, you can paint a strip there in the same colour without oil and then pour your swipe over the top or you swipe one over the tops just in case you are worried about um, you know, the oil sitting on the canvas and maybe not adhering properly. Right, um, I'm just going to torch in here. There's no oil in here so I'm just basically popping bubbles. Hopefully I will be happier with this result with less paint on the surface and smaller bands of colour. That way I shouldn't, shouldn't get those big blocks of, of colour because um, my little bands are smaller. 
Right, now to the side here, on my right, your left, I've got another puppy pedal pad so that I can put my dirty plastics straight onto it. I've got a couple of damp cloths. Um, yeah, so make sure that you are all set up. When you do your, your plastic, don't touch the very edge of the canvas because it'll make it bald because the edge kind of curls up a little bit. So just be aware of that. Um, I'm going to just make my corners of my plastic, oops that's not breaking, um, I need a pair of scissors, I just want to trim off the actual corners of this just so that it's, I'm not going to get a point, sometimes I worry about having a point. And then it catches, so I'm just, just curve that. Do the same to the other one. Sometimes I, I think that that little corner catches and kind of digs in a bit. So let's just cut them off. We'll do the other side as well. I always overlap. Anyway, so I don't think it's going to be a problem that um, it's not exactly pointed. Let's do the, up, the bottom of this one. I forgot to do it. All right. That'll just make me happy. The little things make me happy. All right. I've got my paper towel ready to go to catch the, the plastic. So I can wipe it off. All right, are we ready? Yes. <laughs> Suspense. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, tension mounts and rides away. <laughs> See, I've got more of the dark bluey green there, less there, more there. So hopefully I won't get that just straight line. I might get more of a, a ripple, a wave, which is what I'm hoping for. All right, just touch the swipe colour. Make sure one foot is behind the other and off you go. Try and keep as straight as possible just so that your lines are straight. If you want a wave in it by all means do that. Now my plastic kind of hit there. I don't know what it was doing. If, I don't know what it was doing. <laughs> Um, it should be fine though. I don't think we'll be able to tell once the cells come up. Now make sure that you overlap here, otherwise you'll get that colourful stripe in the middle. So always overlap by a little bit. And again, don't touch the very edge of the canvas. Oh, what's going on there? There's something in there. It's alright, it's not too bad. You can live with it. See, I'll wipe the plastic off so it's relatively clean. Put it over there. Now, it looks as if there might be something in there. Let me just get that out. Um, where's my tweezers? I stick my tweezers into my cardboard um, glove box. Oh, let me move the ladder. Do things properly, woman. Don't try and reach over. Gotcha, you little critter. Yes, you are. Okay. Stick that back into. Stick it in top of the, um, you know, the, the gloves, the cardboard box. That way, I don't lose it. Now I just need to move these prints out of the way so I've got enough room for this. So I'll overlap again, just over here. Won't touch the very top. Try just to touch the swipe colour. Wait for it to all have good contact before you take off. And off you go. Transferring your weight from your front leg to your back leg as you go so you don't fall over. Okay. That looks like a shooting star. 
All right. Well, that's good. I'm happier with that. I haven't got huge, big blocks of, of colour. Um, under here, there's quite a lot of the red oxide I can see. There's some lime there. There's some dark blue. There's a bit of turquoise. It, that's okay. I can deal with that. Um, now, see this bit here, how this has just missed this corner here and that corner there. Um, I'm going to get a bit of card. So these are just the paint chip sample chip cards that you can get from the hardware store. And I always like to put a little bit more paint on the very edge. And then you can just gently, gently go down the edge there, cover that up. If you really don't like your sides, because sides on a swipe can be quite messy looking, if you really don't like the sides, once your painting is dry, you can go around and paint the edges with this matching corresponding colour here, if you so desire. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, now, I'm going to try, try, try to torch very carefully. I don't want clusters again, big clusters. Alright, I'd rather have individual cells. You know me, I like my individual cells. So let's see how we go. So less paint on the surface should give me more individual cells rather than clusters. Because when the cells come up, um, there's not as much resistance on them. Oh, sorry, there is more resistance on them because there's less paint. It's not moving around as much. When you've got a lot of paint on the surface, when your cells pop up, uh, they can move a lot further because there's more paint to move in and around in. So does that make sense to you guys? Hope so. Okay, big breath. Gently, gently heat. Feel free to fast forward over this. It's going to take me a while to torch all of this. I'm not going to get too close. I'm going to see if I can get some individual cells rather than clusters. If you want clusters, you can aim directly at the canvas, you know, sort of like leapfrogging, hopping up and down with your torch, aiming straight down, back up, aiming straight down, back up. Um, if you want clusters, that way you're getting a lot of heat in one area very quickly and that will bring up a lot of cells. If you want minimal cells, just try and heat gently. I'm going to get a sore arm at the end of this. This is taking forever. And then if it takes too long, I get frustrated with it and I, I fast, I, you know, I go faster, I speed up <laughs> is the word. And then that's when I tend to not be happy with it because then I get my clusters. So, oh, there's a cluster. I will get some clusters for sure. It's just, you know, the nature of the beast, the, the oil coming up, it's going to happen. But let me see if I can maybe make them a little bit less. So with the less paint on the surface here, I can actually get a lot closer by the looks of it with my torch. I'm getting pretty close. Again, feel free to fast forward if this is taking way too long. Oh, see, I got too close there. It is certainly making a difference. I can see the difference uh, with the less paint on the surface. It's much harder for the cells to come up. I'm having to torch a lot more. It needs a lot more heat. Just because there's the paint's, um, I guess it's thinner. There's not as much paint on the surface. Having some bubbles. I need to stop and have a rest. Jump down and help 
over you guys, getting a sore arm. I've got nurse's shoulder. <laughs> My shoulders aren't that good from lifting and reaching and carrying. smaller cells because I've got less paint and I've explained that to you. Less paint will give you smaller cells. Whoa, colony. Just try not to drop the torch. One day I'm going to have sticky painty hands and I'm going to drop the torch right into the middle. One day. Sure of it. not what I'm after. Little colonies I prefer. Oh goodness me, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. My hand was shaking. <laughs> I think I'm just holding on to the torch so tight. All right, let's go again. You guys sick of this yet? Fast forward. No, you guys enjoy watching, don't you? All those little bits that you know you help I help you along the way you might learn something if you fast forward you might miss something important so I want to keep some background I don't want to hold massive cells I do want some background dipping. I think people are sort of overdoing the balloon dipping a little bit. You know, if there's something that you don't like, I think oh, I'm going to hide it with the balloon dip, but that's not really, I think, the best use of the balloon dip. And I know I've done it before, but I just don't think that we should just be dipping for the sake of dipping just to hide up some mistake. Although this would look really pretty with some little fairy kisses in it, just little tiny balloons, but I'm not going to, that's not what I'm after with this particular pour. Alright, am I done? I think I'm just about done. I've got the smaller cells that I wanted because I had less paint on the surface. Now I can't show you the other one had a lot more paint on it it's down there on the floor under the under the um, net but I can show you this one again this was my first one that's it there the 
it's getting a bit darker now because it has started to dry especially my dark bluey green on the edge there that's the color it will go to so this is a lot more similar yeah so check out that video that was an interesting one to watch too and then I did the second one which had a lot more paint in it had a lot more lime in it and yeah I just wasn't that happy with it it's down on the floor there and so yeah I'm really really happy with this one loving all the colors uh, there's a few little clusters there that are a bit too much now these little clusters here because there's not that many cells they don't grow into each other you can still see individual cells over here the middle is tiny and it's just way too many so that's the difference i like these little clusters rather than the big clusters see relatively small so they're pretty good that's that's the only section there and maybe up there that has sort of gone a bit wayward um i'm just going to fix my sides here now because i did have some i did have the silicone in this color you can see can see where the silicone is not wanting the paint to touch so I may have to just touch those up right oh um, I'll take you down for closer I think I'm much happier with this one and I haven't got that band of color across the top a straight band oh, sorry hands shaking still Muscle spasms from holding the torch for too long. Oh, it's very physical, isn't it? <laughs> you wouldn't think so. Acrylic pouring, physical. All right, let me show you this and then I'm going to go and have a coffee. All right, I'm going to start up here. So this dark bluey green, it will dry much darker and I will just touch up those little bits of silicone there so when I said earlier that um, you know you can put down a layer of paint first so that when you do when you paint with silicone does hit the canvas there it's not going to leave a little indentation but it will dry flat you won't see that once it's dry you'll be able to just wipe the silicone off so there we go we've got some beautiful bands of color for those gorgeous cells Going the wrong way with the colour. That's better. So nice separate. These are the separate types of cells that I like. Got the little bubbles in between. They just look like little air bubbles popping up. Got some lime there. Clusters are pretty here. Small clusters. You can still see space around the cells. I like that. I, I just don't like it when there's too many cells in a cluster and you can't see the background around them. And then of course we've got all these little floating cells here and there. Little red oxide ones there with the white. Those are really pretty. So yeah, happier with this one. Oh, that scruffy back. Did you hear scruffs? Look at that corner there. That corner's really pretty down there. So I thought I'd just show you the finished products. Um, I think you've all seen these videos now of my coral or barrier reef pores. I started with the little guy down there. So he's a little bit bluer. I must have put more turquoise in that one. So there's other paintings standing up behind them, so it might be not be as clear for you but there he is on the left that's the smaller one now they've all been swiped with the same dark bluey green color and then <clears throat> I can't remember which one I did next but the one on the left there with the bigger cells that mix was slightly thinner so the cells when they've popped up could grow a little bit more and on the one on the right, the mix was a little bit thinner. So <clears throat> when the cells popped up, they couldn't really move very much. So they've basically stayed quite small. 
but they both are really pretty. I'll hang them as a pair in the same room. What do you think? I really love them. They look like multicoloured coral formations to me in the ocean. You know that deep bluey green colour that you get in the the deep ocean. And then the paler colours, that's where the water's a little bit more shallow. So there you go. That's them. Hope you've enjoyed those videos. Have a go at these colours. They're really nice to work with. And um, I will see you for the next pour. <laughs> Bye for now.